Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Hamish Hodder and today we're going to be talking about Return on Invested Capital or ROIC for short. I'm super excited to bring you this one. Uh, ROIC is a crucial part of low risk stock market investing and investing in general really and I think it's probably one of the most misunderstood areas of investing. Um, I see a lot of videos and a lot of uh, stuff on Google that's just textbook definitions and it doesn't really help you um, thoroughly understand the concept of return on invested capital and return on equity and return on assets for that matter too, even though we won't talk specifically about those in this video. So instead of just giving you a super long video of textbook definition and explaining all the different parts of um, the formula, I'm just going to give you a quick definition of what it is. I'll show you the formula in case you need to um, do these calculations yourself. However, you probably won't need to do these calculations yourself. You can just find them on MSN Money or Yahoo Finance very easily. And then I'm going to go through and explain five different types of common situations surrounding the ROIC. The best way for you to understand um, the importance of the ROIC and what we're looking for in it is to uh, hear different situations that you will come across when looking at stocks and assess them in that way rather than trying to work out uh, what you need to do based on the textbook definition. As I mentioned before, this video is a part of my low risk stock market investing series that's on my channel. Um, there's lots of great videos in there explaining exactly how you can invest in really solid companies at super discounts and ensure that you're going to get the great returns um, over the long term. And make sure you subscribe because you definitely don't want to miss out on any of the future videos that are coming up. So let's start out by just explaining what the ROIC is and essentially it's a calculation. It's a formula that we use to determine how well a company is investing the money that they have to invest. So it's how good are they at taking capital from either investors or from taking on debt and how good are they at pumping that into their company and producing income out of that. I'll chuck the formula up on the screen. So it's ROIC equals net income minus the dividends that they pay out, all of that divided by invested capital. And I can go through briefly and explain the different components. However, that's not really important if you're just a beginner. Um, you don't really need to understand um, how to calculate it because you won't need to calculate it. You're just going to need to interpret the number um, when you find it on websites like MSM Money. Net income is pretty easy to understand. It's the bottom line on the income statement. And essentially it's after all the sales, all the revenue that's been produced, then we pay off all the expenses uh, like wages and taxes and all that. What's left afterwards? And if it's, a, if it's positive, it's a profit. And if it's negative, it's a loss. Dividends are what a company pays out to its shareholders um, if it decides not to reinvest the money. And we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, relationship between the ROIC and dividends a little bit later on, so I'll leave that until then. And lastly, capital. So capital is on the balance sheet and essentially it's all of the money that has been raised by the company in order to make investments in the company. And you don't really need to understand this, but if you want to, essentially they can raise capital in a number of different ways. The first way that every public company raises money is in their initial public offering or an IPO. So this is where they offer part of the company to the public in the form of shares and the compensation they receive from that is capital that they can use to invest in the company. Now a company can raise capital, uh, raise equity capital in this way again um, by issuing more shares after they've um, been listed on the public exchange and in the same way they raise more money and they can also raise capital um, through debt. So they can take on more loans or issue debt securities in order to raise money um, in that way, not by giving away part of the company. But if you're a beginner, don't worry about what I just explained then because it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is the ROIC tells us how effective is a company at investing the money we're giving them um, and getting us returns that we want. And the higher, the better, obviously. Um, an excellent ROIC would be something in the 15 plus percent range. And anything between, anything above 10 is good. I wouldn't touch anything below 10. However, there are specific situations in which you might, and I'm going to talk about all those situations right now. So because working out whether a company has a good ROIC isn't just down to whether it's high or low, I've produced these five scenarios um, which will cover pretty much all bases. So when, you, when you're investigating your company, um, you can look at the ROIC and you can see, okay, that's this situation. This is what 
I should be interpreting that as. So the first situation is a company that has a low ROIC as well as no or a low dividend. And this is a situation I would classify as bad. I would not touch an investment that had an ROIC of less than 10% at the same time as not paying a dividend or paying a very low dividend of maybe less than 1%. So basically what this situation tells us is that one, the company is not good at uh, investing our money and getting a strong return on it. And the second thing it tells us is that it's not allowing its shareholders to take those profits and invest them themselves and get better returns. Because if a company had a low ROIC but they paid out their profits to us, we could take that profit and go and invest it in other assets or other businesses and get that return that we want. But a company that has a low ROIC and no dividend isn't allowing us to do that. So we should be staying away from companies in that situation. So the second situation is a low ROIC but a high dividend. And this is a situation I would say is a 50-50, or not 50-50, but it could go either way. And what I mean by this is, when you have a company that has a low ROIC, but they're paying a dividend, this can be a good sign. Because what happens is, companies can't grow ridiculously quickly forever. They can't be super efficient forever. The bigger they get, the less efficient they're going to be at investing money for you. So essentially what big companies do is, when they're growing slower, when they have a poor uh, return on investment capital and poor growth in their earnings and sales and that sort of thing, they'll pay out a dividend so that the investor can take that money and invest it elsewhere to get that return. So while a company might have a lowish ROIC, maybe of 8% or so, they could still be a really solid business but they're just not growing quick enough or they're too big in order to get a great return on their money. So this can be an okay investment. It's basically classified as a dividend investment. It's when you buy a really big blue chip stock that just pays out a dividend and you don't expect the stock price to go up particularly much in the future. You're basically just looking for the income from the dividend. However, this is not the type of business that I personally like to invest in and it's certainly not a business that fits the criteria of our low risk stock market strategies that we talk about in the series. And that's just because these businesses have a lifetime and I'd rather get these businesses when they're a little bit younger, not too young and not too old. So you don't want companies that have no proven track record that are growing really ridiculously quick but they have no evidence that they're going to continue that. And you don't want companies at the end of their life like these ones with a low ROIC and a high dividend because there's no more growing to be done and we can't see really great capital gains on them. So I like to pick companies that are somewhere in the middle. They're growing quickly probably paying no dividend, but they have a great ROIC and their results are growing quickly. And the other thing is if you're able to pick up businesses when they're younger, then over the, over the 20, 30 years their stock appreciates, if they then decide to pay out a dividend to you, you're probably going to get a really high dividend. So if you think of it like this, if a stock, if you bought a stock at $1 a share and over 40 years or so it went up to $10 a share, and then at that $10 price, they decided to pay a 5% dividend, so that's 50 cents. You're getting a 50 cent dividend on a $1 purchase, which is a 50% dividend. So that's much better than buying it at the end of its life when you're only getting a 5% dividend. So the third situation is a high ROIC and a low or no dividend. And these are the companies I love. I love to invest in these companies. And there's a couple of reasons why. So first off, they have a high ROIC of 15% or more. And that basically means they're really efficient at taking money that they have available to them and investing it and getting a good return for me. I don't want a business to pay me a dividend if they're able to invest their money and get a 15% or more return on it because that's what I'm striving for. I'm striving for a 15% or more return on my money. So if the business is doing that, I don't want them to kick the profits back to me. I want them to reinvest it and earn their 15 or more percent on that money. Despite that, if you find a company that has a high ROIC and pays a high dividend, that's okay too. Um, that's absolutely fine. It just means that with the money that's available to them, they're deciding that they can only invest um, a certain proportion efficiently and the rest of it they're going to just give out to the shareholders um, so that shareholders can invest for themselves. So the fourth situation is an ROIC that is slowing down. So what I mean by this is if you took the five-year average ROIC and you took the one-year average ROIC, the one-year would be smaller than the five-year by a significant amount. And this is not a good sign because if you have a company whose ROIC has gone from an 11% average to doing only 8% this year, 
it could mean that the company is getting less and less efficient over time. It could mean that they're slowing down their efficiency. And that's not what we want to see. We want to see companies in the other direction. So it's important to check the five year and the one year and you can find these stats on MSM Money. I'll be showing it on screen right now. And it's important to realize that if you see a stock that you're going to invest in and you see that the ROIC is slowing down, you have to investigate why because there could be a very, very valid reason why that it's slowed down this year. However, you need to investigate if there is. And if you can't find out why, you should be wary of the fact that there could be some sort of reason that you don't know about um, that could be catastrophic to the stock price. And the last scenario is also a good scenario. It's when the ROIC is growing over time. So from the five year average to the one year average, they're getting more efficient. If you see an ROIC that's gone from 12% to 17% or something like that, that is excellent. It means that the company is one, highly efficient over a long period of time, so over five years, and two, they're able to even get more efficient in the latest year. This, of course, is what I'm looking for in a company when I'm looking at the return on invested capital. I'm looking for a high ROIC, and I'm looking for one that is growing from the five-year to the one-year average. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you understand the ROIC, return on invested capital, a little bit more, and I hope that you can apply this to your own investing. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like. If you have any comments, make sure you drop them in the comment box. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one.